99 reporter Megan Thompson. The Olympics brings us tales of strength, triumph, and pride for our nation. And the Cronkite School has been in London uncovering the stories of the 2012 Olympic Games. Now let's take a look at what inspiring stories they've brought for us today. Team USA's Colin Jones is the proud owner of a gold medal from Beijing and two silver medals from this year's games in London. I've been racing all week and I think that for me personally it's definitely been my best games. But the road to becoming an Olympic swimmer wasn't an easy one. When Jones was just five years old he was rescued after nearly drowning in a pool at a water park. And it took me a while to get back into the water, but at the age of eight, I saw my first swim meet and was like, wow, I can do that. And after becoming a swimmer himself, he learned that a lack of water safety is a far too common problem. I was given the drowning statistics for the U.S. and found out that African Americans are three times more likely to drown than any other race. And these are the people that are my friends, my family, that are potentially in, at risk for, for drowning. So the New Jersey native began working with the Make a Splash initiative. He travels the country, talks to kids about water safety, and even gives swimming lessons. Last year we actually hit a million kids. We're at 1.2 uh, million kids now this year, so in the past four years we've, we've seen some big numbers. During these Olympic Games, the 28-year-old is working with City to help earn donations for Make a Splash by using social media interactions between athletes and fans, a role he takes very seriously. As an Olympic athlete, I feel like I can kind of stand on my soapbox and, and talk about how important it is for people to learn how to swim. Jones says Make a Splash has made a dent in the drowning rate, but there is still work to be done to help save lives. In London, Amber Harding, Cronkite News. All right, there, Governor. <laughs> Brian and Sam might have some communication issues. We've been dating for a year and a half, yeah. and we are constantly misunderstanding each other. <laughs> we never know what we're talking about. Brian is from the Midwest United States. Sam is from London. They find a way to make it work. It can be frustrating, but it's funny. You learn all these different words. <laughs> With the world gathering in London for the 2012 Olympics, the differences in British and American communication are more distinct than ever. The Americans we found to be quite loud. Well, well your talk's a performance, isn't it? Yeah. You, What's have, that? To, you have to exaggerate what you do, all when, oh, yeah. Americans. When you're talk. It can really penetrate <laughs> through the air with some of those frequencies at times. Many of those differences come from geography and immigration. It can mean the difference between good day, mate, or what's up. And you, you end up with a sort of placement of the sound. It's about where you end up. Um, in your instrumentation, the sound emanates from slightly different quarters, if you like. We talk pretty quick. Everyone else is quite right laid back when they're talking. I find Yanks quite laid back when they talk. This may describe the large variety of English accents in Britain alone. It's a smaller island, you get different yeah. dialect, and yours is massive, and everyone speaks the same, more or less. It's fun. It's a fun game. <laughs> You couldn't really do that in the U.S. <laughs> Are they from Glasgow? No, 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 that's an Edinburgh accent. <laughs> so as the London games continue, Brian will work on perfecting his own linguistic skills with Sam as his coach. In London, Blake Wilson, Cronkite News. Thanks for watching. Continuous coverage of the 2012 Olympic Games can be found right here on No 99. The Cronkite School is producing more packages today, and we'll have those for you tomorrow. For No 99, I'm Megan Thompson.